Hello, multi metaxes. Yep, that's a mock mention. And a big thank you to Denev for providing that little sharp, short, snappy mock mention. Quite a, quite a nice little change from some of the more long winded ones I get, but all mock mentions are very welcome. So if you've got a mock mention, just leave it in a comment and uh, I'll pick up on it, acknowledge it, and put it on the mock mention list. That's how it works. And it also works that a mock mention introduces a quality spirits review, which is a little bit more in depth, a little bit more informative, and provides more context to the, the, the particular spirit that um, I happen to be connecting with and most of the time it's Scotch single malt whiskey and there's a reason for that. It, quite simply, it's what's on my doorstep. It's what's readily available to me and it's what I know because for many, many years before I moved to the middle of the Irish Sea, I lived in Scotland, specifically Glasgow. And although it's no mean city, it's a friendly mean city. Just visit and find out for yourselves. So this is Ralphie Review 984 and the single malt I'm reviewing for you today is Jura, Jura, Jura Bourbon Cask. Aye? And the reason I'm reviewing this is that I was in my local supermarket which never usually discounts whiskies, and they have discounted this whisky not just once, they've discounted it twice. So that starts to give the context for this particular review. Now I can tell you right now that this is not the sort of whiskey that I'm going to finish the bottle in a month or so, although I rarely do that sort of thing because it is very much a consumer pitched version of Scotch whiskey. It's 40%, it's um, loaded, and that by the way is caramel. Have a look at that kind of tango glow. And caramel isn't an artificial, artificially lab produced, industrially produced colourant that is permissible to put into Scotch whiskey. Uh, as, so as to make it look better, to make it look quote unquote richer. Because the majority of people who buy whiskey judge the purchases partly with what they see, which is a big mistake, but you need to know quite a lot about whiskey before you understand that fully. And that's just the way it is. It's also significantly chill filtered um, and also being bottled at 40%. You'll find that if you're going to drink it straight rather than have it with Coca-Cola, ginger beer, soda water or iron brew, just giving you a few serving options there. If you're going to have it straight, which is what I, the way I drink my whiskey 99.9% .9 of the time, um, you won't need much water in it. You really won't. The reason I bought this, now where's my camera? I'll, I'll show you the receipt that it cost me in British pounds, 22 pounds. 22 pounds for a bottle of single malt. Now, I'll show you on my phone, um, camera, pictures. Here we go. I'll hold up so you can see it clearly. There it is. Now, you see there's the Jura in the middle and underneath you've got a little yellow sticker, right? Yellow sticker and it says 22 pounds reduced for a second time from 20 three pounds, right? And on one side, you've got a proprietary supermarket bottling of um, 12 year old single malt whiskey. So it's quite generalized, decent, competent, and it's 26 pounds 50 a bottle. And on the other side, you have very recognizable, a bottle of Johnny Walker Red Label, which is a pound cheaper at 21 pounds. Now, if you were to put a gun to my head and, and, and say, Ralphie, you know, the only whiskey you're gonna get all week is an option of Johnny Walker Red Label or Jura. What are you gonna pick? 
obviously I'm going to pick the single malt. And I have to add that I've had a few wee glasses out of this and I have to say they're small glasses because my prejudice was almost preconditioning me to not like this but for what it is and importantly malt mates for the price it is it's the equivalent of something like 26 dollars or 24 euros something like that it actually represents pretty good value for money although I have to add that if you are just to spend up to between 30 pounds and 40 pounds you're now in the range that if you shop carefully you can get some seriously good blended malts, blended scotches and single malts which are way ahead of this but a bargain's a bargain and at £22 a bottle when you remove the value added tax which is the bank tax off the top of the bottle of 20% that takes it down to let me see £22, 10% is £2.20, um, £4, well it's about £18 roughly I'm not, I'm not good at arithmetic as you can tell it's about £18 of which over £8 is duty so in fact White and Mackay, the producers of this single malt, have produced the spirit, matured it, bottled it, labelled it, put a stopper on it and given you a cardboard container for less than £10. A lot less than £10. Now, my opinion, it's just an opinion, they're losing money out of this. They've got to be losing money. It's, it's sending very mixed messages when you have single malts being tout, touted, being presented, being marketed to the world as a luxury product. And yet now and again, out of the blue, you see what can only be described as extreme discounting and this isn't alone there was a situation in an online retailer recently where um, a heavily peated integrity bottled whiskey was selling for 32 pounds and again anything less than 40 pounds a bottle distillers are making in my opinion no money out of it so it's it's a kind of it's a difficult situation but that's compounded by the fact that particularly in Britain in the UK people are in shock at the moment with the rise of interest rate rates because it's happened very publicly very suddenly and very dramatically that anybody with a mortgage is paying far more than they expected on a monthly basis now this means that whiskey drinkers who have been enjoying a prolonged period, period of readily available good quality spirits at what you'd call accessible prices are suddenly saying stop. Right, sit down in the kitchen, make a strong cup of coffee, something with caffeine in it, we're going to have to budget. We're going to have to set a very strict budget. We're not eating out. We're not ordering any Chinese meals, takeaways. We're not ordering any delivery pizzas. We're not buying any whiskey. We're not going any holidays. We have to hold on to our house. We have to pay our mortgage or we're going to get evicted. And it's the sheer trauma of going through that process that really focuses people's minds. And that is why reflecting the sudden economic situation in Britain in particular that I am reviewing this whiskey just to take the opportunity to discuss where to find palatable it's not necessarily good quality but palatable whiskies at much more affordable prices when when you're in a really tight budget and this will be reflected in Ralphie Review 984 Extras in which I'll be talking about the avenues of exploration where you can go to find better, better of accessibility 
of whiskies and quality spirits when you're on a budget. In the meantime, let's give this a nose and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jura. This is a distillery I have not reviewed very often on my channel because getting hold of really decent versions of Jura, in my opinion, beyond official bottlings, is a hard mission. It really is. You used to find Jura generally available from Cadenheads, from Signatory, from Berry Brothers and Rudd, the, the, the available independent bottlers, but they're not available now. Very few and far between, unless they're really, real, really old. Fruity and malty. The fruitiness is fig and I would call it a dark prune note. It is a good clean nose. This is well made spirit. And Jura Distillery on the Isle of Jura, just to the north east of Isla and just south of the Isle of Mull is one of these off the beaten track locations where you have this fascinating, completely unpretentious small distillery that makes remarkably flavoursome classic West Coast style single malts without any fanfare whatsoever. None at all. The bottlings available tend to be official bottlings, which are, I have to say, relatively boring to the experienced whisky drinker because the simple reason is they're over-processed in their delivery. They're usually 40%, 43 if you're lucky. They're chill filtered, they've got loads of caramel added and there's too much over blending going on which fudges and removes the personality of the signature. So you, you tend to get a general Jura signature without it being specific and far more interesting as compared to the bottles that you would get from independent bottlers, particularly the ones you pick up at auction. Please take note of what I'm saying here, at auction. The nose, big, beefy, rich, slightly sweet. It's almost like a combination of Oban and Cardew, but there's also a little bit of distant nuttiness to it. And one of the flavour notes that fans of Jura are always looking for in the older bottlings is the walnut note. It's prominent in older, many older Juras, and it's an absolute delight. Jura is a wonderfully characterful, super personable, very friendly, accessible style of single malt, which unfortunately we just don't see it delivered properly by the pres present owners of the distillery. And if you're looking for a present for someone's birthday or for Father's Day or for Mother's Day or a gift or a thank you because someone did your garden for you while you're on holiday and they don't drink much whiskey, this is one you'd go for because you go into the supermarket and it's in discount. It happens quite a lot actually. Cheers. Quite a sharp initial attack. Um, sweet and sour with the emphasis firmly on the sour. It's quite dry. It's a bit what you call mineral flinty and it's not very appealing actually. This is a non-age statement version and they're claiming here that it's bourbon cask matured. Matured in American white oak X bourbon barrels. That is as much as you get to know. Uh, sure, you've got the classic reference notes of X bourbon car barrels of that kind of vanilla, which is kind of really kind of incorporated into the malt, but still kind of standing out with that ubiquitous American white oak flavour. Um, and you do need, if you really if you want to be sipping this, you do need to add water. 
I'm adding two or three millilitres, so half a teaspoonful of water. I'm not adding much more, otherwise it starts to starts to kind of fall a bit, fall apart a little bit. But um, if you're paying £22 in the UK for this, I'm telling you right now, you're getting good value for money. It's not a banger of a whiskey, far from it. But it's competent. It'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with many other supermarket proprietary brands that are pitched at people who are occasional buyers and don't really know that much about whiskey because they're buying in a budget. So you'll find this competing with uh, Tam Navullen and Ardmore. I would suggest this is the better option of the three. As soon as you add water, the nose becomes more interesting. It becomes a little bit more expressive. You're getting a more definitive, a more isolated and interesting malt oak, malt note. A little bit more separated now on the nose from the oak presence, which is, as I say, it's pretty ubiquitous. A far kinder arrival. Far, far kinder. It isn't as hostile now, although the finish has a little bit too much heat in it, which tells me they are working the stills quite fast and they are using malted barley, which gives them a high alcohol yield. If they were to slow the stills down, and use local barley, Jura could produce something phenomenal, but honestly, I really don't think we're gonna see it. It's not their style. It's not the style of the owners. They, they don't, they just, they're not interested in that. Um, it starts now to open up, and it opens up quite rapidly because this is a young whiskey. As I say, I don't put it any more than six, seven years old because of the heat, the heat and the spirit. It's not been tamed down by the oak. It's almost as if the oak, the, 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 the bourbon casks were a finish, a six month finish. So they have stored it for the majority of its time in fairly tired casks, just to keep the signature clean and, and distinctive. And then they finished it off just to make it palatable tolerable to the consumer um, in some fresher oak and new, new oak wood, first fill oak as they call it. And uh, this has given them a, a relatively generic, competent and forgettable result. When I say forgettable, I'm talking about someone who really knows about whiskey because they've simply been drinking it a long time. This will not be of interest to you. If you're looking, if you're a, 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 an experienced whiskey sipper that's been sipping whiskey for at least five years, you really want to get to the auctions and look for the independent bottlings of Tura because some of them are absolutely phenomenal. Really, they're outstanding. You, you wouldn't even recognise them compared to this. It just, you just wouldn't. I know, because I've, I've opened these bottles. In fact, I'm in the mood to open another one. I might share it with you as a review in the future. Now we're getting somewhere. Now I can conclude my review because the nose is producing more complexity and I have every confidence, due to my personal experience, that the palate is going to do the same when I taste it. Creamier, and the creaminess isn't so much the vanilla note coming from the bourbon casks. That's actually getting suppressed by the addition of water. It's a creaminess and a slight toffee note that's coming from the malted barley as part of the signature of Jura. If you get the opportunity to go to visit Isla, could I make a recommendation to you? Make a day to go across to Island Hop from Isla over to Jura to visit Jura Distillery because it's going to be worth a visit. It's going a little bit beyond a faraway place. It's a 
a delightful day out and uh, Jura in fact despite its complete deforestation and primeval um, environment, a uh, very feudal environment, is um, it's, it's a fascinating island. It's one that I actually know myself having been there and slept overnight in the haunted caves at the north of the island just before the Cory Vrechen Whirlpool. It's famous that one. It's more like it. The quality of the single malts coming out to meet me and it's bypassing the superficial influence of the American oak wood and it is delicious sweet and sour, super malty, just a hint of peat in the background but not a lot and there's a kind of richness, there's no pre presence of that n walnut note which is which is such a signature for Jura. But this is a competent malt from an interesting distillery, which, and this is a little factoid for you, at Jura they have the amongst the biggest stills, the biggest pot stills that you'll find in the entire Scotch whisky landscape. So big stills can produce big, big flavour. In fact, the stills are more identifiable to what would be used in traditionally in Irish distilleries rather than Scottish distilleries that traditionally use smaller um, stills, smaller stills, squat pots as they call them, that you, such as you'll find at the Isle of Arran distillery, distillery and Macallan distillery. One last taste before I malt mark this. Mm. I can safely say this has exceeded my expectations, but remains but remains a very mediocre but competent delivery of what is in fact one of Scotland's most fascinating, completely unknown single malts. What will I give it? I'm going to give it 79 out of 100. That's its malt mark. The reason I'm giving that mark is it couldn't be so much more, but in fairness, the price was one of the cheapest that I've paid for a single malt for several years. It's a malt mark, that's what it is, a homogenized malt mark. And to conclude, here's the glass I poured last night when I was doing my research. When you look at it, it's clearly chill filtered, but not, not quite. There is just the vaguest hint of a little bit of mist, misting in this glass. So just a little bit of the essential barley oils, which adds so much to character and flavor. They're just a little bit left there. So it hasn't been absolutely, um, crippled with chill filtration. There you have it. If you want to pop back again for my next review, which will be the extras, 984 extras, I will be talking about where to look for your bargains when times are tough and you're on a serious budget. You see, I'm just going to give it, I'm just going to be winging it. Just give you a few directions to look at and we'll see, see, see how, how, how it works for you. Because Sooner or later, we're all on a budget for one reason or another, because it's just part and parcel of the journey of life. Journey of life says, this video's com completed. Time to get the Clivey clicker out with the big red button, which switches this video recording off.